Hi, I'm Liz Larson with The Art of Frosting. And this month we've been doing wedding cakes and grad cakes, and we did a fresh flower wedding cake. Well, that got me thinking. Recently, I had a birthday cake to do for a really dear friend of mine, and I didn't have a lot of time. I wanted to make her something really, really special, but I didn't have a lot of time to do something really elaborate. She also likes really delicious cakes, so I wanted to make her something with a really special flavor. So this is what I came up with, this raspberry mudslide cake with a raspberry chambord frosting, which I'm going to show you how to do. And also this beautiful chocolate bowl. It's a lot of fun to do. It's really unexpected and very unexpected on top of a dessert cake. So this cake can make a beautiful centerpiece with flowers and a chocolate bowl as long as your room is cool because the bowl is chocolate. But it makes a gorgeous centerpiece when it's placed on a really beautiful tall cake stand. So if you don't have a lot of time or you have somebody really special you want to do a cake for or both, this is a cake for you. Let's get started. We're starting with some dark chocolate chips. I have some raspberry chambord here. This is a raspberry liqueur. I've got heavy whipping cream, not ultra pasteurized, old fashioned or just regular pasteurized. And today I'm gonna to be using my pastry pride. So if you don't have pastry pride, use a combination of whipping cream and pudding, instant pudding, and you'll get a similar result as this, works great. And so we wanna use glass to melt our chocolate chips. So for our ganache, just a quick reminder, you want about a cup of chocolate chips, and you wanna cover that with heavy cream. So we're just where the chocolate chips are covered. So it's about a half a cup, maybe two thirds of a cup. Pop that in the microwave, half power for about a minute and a half, and we will mix that up. So I am using pastry pride for this because it's fast and I like the way it tastes. But again, use some heavy whipping cream and some instant vanilla pudding together. You'll get a really similar effect. So I'm gonna use about half of a container of this pastry pride, so about a pound or 16 ounces, or about 450 grams. And I'm just gonna add my chambord. So I want about two tablespoons. It depends on how strong you want it. Now, if you don't wanna use the alcohol in this, turn it into a simple syrup. Or you could also just add um, some raspberry preserves, would work great too. But the alcohol makes a nice, kind of a grown-up dessert cake. We're just gonna stick it on our mixer and mix it up. So you wanna be careful not to over whip, whether you're using pastry pride or the whip topping and pudding. You'll get a mousse if you over whip with this. So you wanna just about that. I added just a tiny touch of pink to add to the raspberry. My next step here is to take a bowl of chocolate chips, dark chocolate. I've got it in a glass bowl. I'm gonna put this in the microwave for a minute at half power, and then for about another 10 to 15 seconds at a time at half power until it's melted. This is what we're gonna use for our chocolate bowl. Once your cream and chocolate are warm enough to melt the chocolate, stir vigorously to incorporate the cream with the chocolate. Keep stirring until you get a nice, shiny ganache. You'll also want to check the thinness of your ganache by letting it drip off the end of your spatula. That way you'll know if you'll get the right drips and the right cooling. You can add a little bit of cream if it is not quite thin enough for you. You can see that I've pre-iced this cake and that I put it on a nice tall cake stand. These are really easy to find almost anywhere. You can find them at secondhand stores and even at your TJ Maxx and Ross. You can find these. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and put my chambord icing on. If you have not learned how to block a cake in this way using a quick icer, now is a great time to go to curious.com where I have a 10 lesson course that includes how to ice or block a cake with a quick icer and a bench knife or the drywall tool plus all the basics that you really need to do a lot of the things that are here on my channel. These tools take just a little bit of practice, but it really is worthwhile to make a really square level cake. 
which makes all the difference, especially when you're pouring chocolate. You really want those edges to look perfect because remember here, we're not gonna be putting a border. You're just gonna have that beautiful, smooth chocolate. Next, we're ready to pour ganache. We wanna test the temperature to make sure it's not too warm or it will melt the icing below. Just pull it up and test with your finger. Room temperature or body temperature is just about right. Now's the time to give your ganache a good laster, checking the consistency and making sure it's just dripping off the end of your spatula very, very smoothly. You want to put a nice thick layer of chocolate just on the top, not down the sides. The more chocolate you put, the longer and fuller your drips are going to be and the more pooling you're going to have. So get your spatula on nice and flat on the top, very, very light pressure and turn your turntable letting the tip of your spatula just push the chocolate lightly over the edges. The more you spin and the more you push over the edge, the longer your drips are going to be and the more pooling effect you're going to have. I decided that I got such a nice pretty edge with the pooling that I'm not going to put a bottom border on. This is a great way to do it. You can decide before or after, after you see what your pooling looks like. The only thing with this is you need to make sure that when you block the cake, your bottom edge is very clean. So there's no leftover icing on your pedestal. That'll look kind of dirty and you can't clean it up after the pooling's already on there. Next, I filled a parchment with our melted chocolate chips. I like to use the parchment because when we're done with this, we can just let the chocolate harden and add it back to our bowl. You want to cut the tip at about a size four writing tip. If it's too thin, your bowl will be fragile. And if it's too thick, your bowl just won't be very attractive. So just cut the tip right off and you can get ready to pipe on your balloon. We're going to start piping right at the top of our balloon and then come all the way down about the middle. Now how far you go down will determine how tall or deep your bowl is. You just want to drop lines back and forth. Be careful not to actually touch the balloon with your bag. Um, then you'll kind of get smears. You want to just drop lines. I guess I forgot to film this, but you want to blow up a water balloon. And as big as you like, that's how big your bowl is going to be. And then just turn it upside down and let it rest inside another bowl. Continue on around until you get about the look that you want. Now I noticed that mine actually is shorter on one side. So I'm just going to go back in and fill in over the top of those areas. This is really a basket looking. So you can go over it as many times or as few times as you want. Just kind of take a look at how your strength is going to be. The next step of this is to go around. I'm going to start about two thirds of the way down and just start to drop a line around the cake. This can get a little tricky, but I kind of think that the asymmetrical look of this actually adds to the beauty of it. I almost feel like if it were too perfect, it would just look like it weren't handmade and it was something you bought. So I kind of like that. But the more and more you do it, the more I do it, the more you'll get a better eye for how the lines are going to fall and how you really want it to look. Remember that you can make these over and over again and just melt them back down if they don't look how you want. And that's the basic idea. Now this is going to need to set up for probably at least a half an hour even if you put it in the refrigerator. You want to let this be completely cool and hard before you try to pop the balloon. Next, while our bowl is cooling, I am prepping our flowers for putting them in the bowl. We want to use some floral tape. That way, none of our flowers leak onto our chocolate or touch the chocolate in any way. We're going to use a set of clippers. This is the same set of clippers that we use to trim our dowels that we usually keep separate from any kind of gardening. But in this case, it's okay. Go ahead and use them to trim your flowers, but put them in the dishwasher afterwards so they're nice and clean. I'm gonna wrap just the bottom edge of our flowers. You just take your floral tape, pull on it tight, and then wrap it around. It sticks to itself, and you wanna seal the very end. You pull it tight to seal, and it'll just snap right off. You want about three inches. You want the length to be long enough that it'll stick out of your bowl, but not stick down into your cake. 
I'm just using a small bouquet that I got from the grocery store. You can get them at the flower shop. Now it's okay to use flowers from your garden as long as they're well rinsed and not covered in pesticides or dirty or full of bugs. So basically you might want to buy them at the grocery store or the floral shop. But just decide on the color scheme that you want in advance and buy florals that way. You also might want to buy just a little bit of filler. Once your bowl is hard enough and cool enough to tap with your fingernail and you can actually hear the tap, then it's probably ready to go ahead and peel the balloon away out of it. So be really, really careful. Turn it over, set it down on your surface, and then get ready to pop the balloon with your scissors or a pin. Once you've popped it, you want to leave it alone. It'll actually kind of naturally peel itself away from the bowl. The more patient you can be, the more likely your bowl will end up in one piece. Once the balloon's peeled itself away, or you've helped it along a little, you want to put your bowl right in the center of your cake and just push down lightly so that the chocolates blend together and you get a nice solid placement of your bowl. Now you could tip it to the side if you want a little more artistic look or you can have it straight up and down. I like to add just a little bit of my icing in the middle. It kind of acts like a little bit of glue for my flowers and then I'm just going to come back in and really really delicately start to place. You really don't want to push down if you don't have to just lightly set them on the side. Your little bit of glue of icing here will hold it in place. And if you watched our video on how to do fresh flowers on a wedding cake, you'll get the idea of how to do the arrangement. You wanna place things in threes. Is really the very best way to get a nice even balance. So three yellows, three of the pink or purple, and you can get as much height here as you want. You even could just put one big flower right down in the middle and it would be really pretty. So let's not neglect our sides. We wanna just gently push these under our cake. We're really not pushing them in. I'm not a big fan of that. You could do a small arrangement on the side or you could do just individual flowers around your base like so. You can see there's endless possibilities for flower colors and design here. You can do a million things, including different kinds of chocolates, white chocolates, colored chocolates, candy melts, any of those combinations even would be really beautiful. And now you know how to make a really easy, but really fancy and delicious dessert cake. This is a lot of fun. I really encourage you to try this out. Try it with some white chocolate or even some colored candy melt would be absolutely gorgeous. I really like it in the chocolate because it looks very decadent. So my friend who received this cake really liked it and was really surprised. She didn't even know that the bowl was chocolate until we went to serve the cake and I lifted the bowl off and handed her a chocolate bowl full of flowers. It was a lot of fun. So thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Join us at Facebook where so many great decorators like you are sharing their work with me and with the rest of the world. There are great contests going on there monthly where you can win a piece of my jewelry. And if you don't want to enter a contest for the jewelry, you can find it at etsy.com, E-T-S-Y.com at thewoodshop.tv where you can find Carl Jacobson's work from the Woodshop TV here on YouTube, as well as my jewelry. Again, you can always find me at www.theartoffrosting.blogspot.com where there is a whole body of my work. I'll put all these links in the description section. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you again next time. Lots more to come. Bye.